Good afternoon. Welcome to Learning at Home on VIA. I'm Holly Dittmar. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Salisburg Elementary School in the Jersey Shore Area School District. The program coming up next is about Vikings, so I thought it would be fun to look into their culture just a little bit. Now, when I ask you about Vikings and what comes to mind, chances are that this is what you picture. That's right, big, rugged, brutal men with their horned helmets, their ruthlessness. And here's a little bit about them. So the Vikings were Norse, which is Scandinavian, and they were warriors who looted or conquered many surrounding areas. They were sacking towns. Um, they would take anything and everything that they wanted. It could be people, it could be animals, it could be things in, in people's homes. Um, if they saw it and they wanted it, it was theirs. They would destroy churches. They would very easily defeat armies that were smaller than them. And in general, they were known for their brutality and their savageness. However, they weren't always away on these expeditions. Vikings are also known for other aspects of their culture. For example, their long ships. They're known for being very good at their ship making and the long ships were a design that was duplicated by other cultures. Also their jewelry. Their jewelry had some very intricate designs and was beautiful. Something else that a lot of people don't think about when they think about Vikings are the fact that the Vikings were farmers. When they were not away on expeditions, they were farmers. And things that they cultivated were rye, barley, oats, and wheat. They grew vegetables like cabbage and peas, beans and root vegetables, and they used very primitive tools, um, probably made out of wood, wooden plows to sow um, their harvest. And, um, what we're going to do today is we are going to be making Viking bread. And it's an easy recipe. It's using the ingredients that they would have had. And it is something that I think you can do without too much of a hassle. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind you that whenever we bake, you want to practice good hygiene. So you want to make sure that you have clean hands. You've washed your hands. You want to make sure that your hair is back so it's not going to get in your food. You want to have a nice clean working space to work on. And um, once you have all of that ready, then the recipe is pretty simple. Okay, we are back and we're all set up and here's our little Viking friend. Um, he is going to watch us as we make his Viking bread. So you may want to grab a paper and a pencil to take some notes while I'm going through this so that you can remember. And um, before we start, I just want to talk as a teacher and a parent that I think that baking is a great skill to practice with your children at home. Um, in light of our current situation, we are spending a lot of time at home. So I think we've had more opportunities than normal to do some cooking and some baking with our children. And this recipe here is actually a fantastic starter recipe. If they're just learning, just getting their hands a little wet, you know, this is a perfect opportunity and it's very easy. It's hard to mess up. So. With that being said, I'm going to show you what to do. The ingredients that you're going to need, you're gonna need three cups of a whole wheat flour, and I've already pre-measured everything of mine. So this is the whole wheat flour. You need three cups of that, and you need two cups of all-purpose flour. So here's our all-purpose, two cups of it. You need one teaspoon of baking soda. I will measure that out when I mix them together. You need one teaspoon of salt. You need two cups of water that I already have measured out here. You need three-fourths cups of rolled oats. Same oats that you would use in oatmeal. And then you're going to need additional oats that we're going to sprinkle on top. 
before we bake. And we are preheating our oven to 375 degrees. Now, if you're at home, you know you don't go to your oven and you don't do any of that if you don't have a parent or an adult with you or have given you permission. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a parent available so that you can go and make sure that you are heating the oven and baking correctly. Okay, now what we're gonna do, very easy, you are going to mix all of the ingredients together except for the oats that we sprinkle on top but we are gonna use these oats within it. So we're gonna mix our three cups of our whole wheat flour and our two cups of our all-purpose flour. And now, another great lesson. I, I, this is what I tell my children at home. If you don't have measuring spoons, or yeah, don't know where they are, which is usually the case in my house, that so we are missing the one we need, um, I tell them to go get spoons out of our drawer. And we have larger spoons, smaller spoons. And I tell them the general rule of thumb is that the bigger spoon is going to be the tablespoon, smaller spoon is going to be a teaspoon. So what you are gonna do is you're gonna take a teaspoon, which is our smaller spoon, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. So here is my baking soda. And here is my salt. And then we are mixing in our three fourths cup of rolled oats. Now, if you have a big wooden spoon, that would work great for mixing this. I, however, I'm gonna use a fork. So I'm gonna hold my bowl tightly and I am just going to blend all of these dry ingredients together. At school, I know we talk a lot about fractions. Baking is a great opportunity for kids to actually see, oh wow, that's a half cup. Two half cups equal one whole cup. And different concepts like that. Once we get this mixed pretty well, we are going to take our water and we're gonna pour it right on in there. And now, we're going to try to blend without making too big of a mess. Try to blend these and mix them all together. And you're gonna notice it's gonna start to get stickier and thicker from this water. Oh, and there is my oven. Just beeped, is preheated. Once it is mostly sticking together, here comes the fun, messy part. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my flour and I'm going to sprinkle it down on here. And I'm also gonna take and I'm gonna kind of get my hands covered in some flour. And I'm gonna take my batter and I'm gonna dump it out onto my countertop. And I'm gonna finish blending it with my hands. And you see I'm just kind of picking it up and turning it in. This is called kneading, not done by professional, I want to note. <laughs> and I am kneading my dough to try to turn it into a loaf. Before I can shape it into the loaf, I want to make sure that I have everything blended in there and that I don't have any dry areas that still have powder in them. Make sure that I get everything Put together. Once I do, I'm gonna kind of, kind of looks like a football. Just kind of shape it into a football. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna get the pan that we are gonna bake it into so I will be back. Okay, we are back and I have my baking dish. Um, you could use any kind of a baking dish to, to bake it. If you have a cookie sheet, you could use that. I have this nice round um, glass dish here that we're gonna use. And you're gonna take your 
loaf shaped bread and you are going to put it into the baking dish. Now, um, what you wanna do is, this is gonna be more like a flat bread. And a flat bread, it doesn't get really big and puffy like the loaves of bread that you buy at the grocery store. It's gonna be flatter, it's gonna be thick and dense. If you've read um, and ever heard of brown breads in history books, it's gonna be more like the brown bread that you read about. Um, so you're gonna kinda push it in here, flatten it out, and I'm gonna kinda spread it out to this round dish a little bit. And then I am gonna take about one fourth, one third, one fourth cup of the same oats that we mixed in the bread, and I'm gonna sprinkle these on top and kind of press them in to the dough. There we go. So that looks fantastic. Now it is ready to bake, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it into the oven. It's already preheated at 375 degrees, and we are gonna bake it for one hour one hour all right we'll be back so i'm giving you a quick glimpse at what it should look like while it's baking again you're going to notice it does not doesn't rise up there like normal bread does and that's okay i'm back my bread has about one minute left before i go get it i wanted to ask you a quick question the question is what do you think that the vikings used to sweeten up their food and I'll give you a hint. They did not use white sugar like what we use today. They didn't have it, they didn't use it. So think about what they used as a sweetener on their flatbread or their other foods. I'm gonna go get the bread and when I come back, I'll give you the answer. So I have the bread here, it's finished, and it is piping hot. I just got it out of the oven, but here it is. This is our flat bread. See how flat it is? And it's very warm, so I'm not going to dig in quite yet. However, I did ask you a question, and I want to answer it before we go. Um, the question was, how did the Vikings sweeten up their food? And if you said, honey, you got it right. Honey was their natural sweetener. It's all they had. They didn't use sugar like we use in foods today. They used their honey. So I encourage you, if you make your Viking bread, to grab some honey, share it with your family, and enjoy. Last part. It was good. Here's a review of the information you learned today. See if you can get all of the questions correct. Ruthless means A, not having Ruth with you, B, excited to have something, or C, cruel and severe. The correct answer is C, cruel and severe. Looted means A, taken anything and everything from someone, B, polluted something, or C, played an instrument loudly. The correct answer is A, taken anything and everything from someone.
Cultivated means A, grew, B, fought, or C, rode. The correct answer is A, grew. Vikings cultivated A, corn, B, oranges, or C, barley. The correct answer is C, barley. Vikings were well known for their A, dancing, music, and art, B, fighting, ships, and jewelry, or C, language and horseback riding. The correct answer is B, fighting, ships, and jewelry. Vikings are from A, Egypt, B, Scandinavia, or C, Guatemala. The correct answer is B, Scandinavia. Viking bread is similar to A, sweet cake, B, sticky buns, or C, brown bread. The correct answer is C, brown bread. What did Vikings use to sweeten up their foods? A, honey, B, sugar, or C, honey and sugar? The correct answer is A, honey. A live science contributor named Ryan Goodrich sums up the Vikings quite well. He says, the Vikings were a seafaring people from the late 8th to early 11th century who established a name for themselves as traders, explorers, and warriors. They discovered the Americas long before Columbus and could be found as far east as the distant reaches of Russia while these people are often attributed as savages, raiding the more civilized nations for treasure and women, the motives and culture of the Viking people are much more diverse. These raiders also facilitated many changes throughout the lands from economics to warfare. I'm going to end our time this morning together by reading a poem for kids by Paul Perro. It's called History of Vikings. The Vikings lived a thousand years ago in Denmark 
Sweden, and Norway. Sometimes called Norse, they're gone now, of course, but we think of them still today. There were kings who ruled the lands, and there were farmers and traders. Jarls were the richermen, others were fishermen. Some were Viking raiders. These raiders sailed to England in long ships made of wood. They'd burn and pillage any small village and steal everything they could. One famous Viking was Ragnar Harry Breaches. He once raided Paris in France. Success brought him fame, but what a silly name. Who'd want to be called Harry Pants? Famous explorer Eric the Red found a place that was windy and freezing. He called it Greenland, and this, so he planned, would make it seem rather more pleasing. Eric's son Leif was an explorer too. He captained a longship with 35 men. Clever and plucky, nicknamed Leif the Lucky, he sailed to America and back again. Vikings believed the afterlife was a great hall called Valhalla. A huge feast where the only men there were warriors, men of valor. Odin was the king of gods, worshipped by the Norse. He had a long beard, but what's really weird is he rode an eight-legged horse. There were lots of other gods and goddesses, like Freya, pretty and sweet, and mighty Thor, god of thunder and war, and Loki, with his lies and deceit. That's enough about Norsemen for now. We've learned they were lots of things. Explorers and thieves with such strange beliefs. Let's say goodbye to the Vikings. Thank you so much for joining me on Learn at Home with VIA. I had a great time and I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make some Viking bread.